Hi, everyone. So, good afternoon. Still awake. Yeah, <laughs> very good, very good. Yeah, so we'll have a little fireside chat here with, uh, with Cindy from uh, Alibaba. Yeah. So everybody, of course, knows Alibaba, but uh, what are you doing at Alibaba? So I'm uh, running the Alibaba Entrepreneurs Fund. It is a fund uh, set up three years ago by Jack Ma in Hong Kong. Um, the uh, group has allocated 1 billion Hong Kong dollars, which is about 130 million U uh, US dollars to invest into startups in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is really to build up the startup ecosystem in Hong Kong. Hong Kong is um, a bit like maybe a bit like Japan, which is um, uh, f still very early stage in mm -hmm. terms of uh, talking about people go after graduating to go into startups, has their own business. And, um, and therefore, we also lack of investors in Hong Kong. And the idea of uh, having this fund is to hopefully be able to identify some good examples from Hong Kong and to you know, really encourage or inspire the younger generation to think about um, doing something more innovative rather than just you know, having a job in a big corporation. Yeah, like at Alibaba. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but, uh, but I think that... Uh, uh, it's, it's kind of like great to hear that because it uh, also reminds me of, uh, kind of like early days of uh, Slush and uh, why we actually started doing Slush in the first place. Because uh, we had very much the same uh, challenge in, uh, in Finland and in, in Helsinki. And uh, in 2007, uh, I was actually talking about uh, entrepreneurship. And uh, I, was, uh, I think that my presentation was... Uh, 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 I, I was talking about that it's okay to be an entrepreneur right. and okay, okay, okay to be an entrepreneur that's kind of like uh, translated from Finnish means that it's great. So uh, if you ask a Finnish person uh, what they think about, you know, for example, slush here, even if they think that it's fantastic, they will say, yeah, it was okay. Yeah. But anyway, so I was talking about uh, it being okay to be an entrepreneur and, uh, and then uh, I had 600 students at Aalto University uh, in attendance, and then I asked them that, okay, how many of you guys uh, will start your own company or, or join a startup once you graduate, or even before, which is okay as well. And in 2007, out of 600 students, only three raised their hand, which means that, uh, you know, all the others were thinking about, like, going to work for, okay, Nokia at the time was very successful, or, you know, one of the big corporations or the government. And, uh, of course, that was like a disaster. So then together with a few friends, we decided that we have to do something. And that's actually why we started Slush. It was not to do a great event. It was actually to change the mindset and get more people uh, excited about entrepreneurship. And, uh, you know, having been to Hong Kong uh, many times, I think that uh, uh, you're absolutely right that it's uh, similar to here in, in Japan, that we really need to uh, make entrepreneurship uh, more popular, but also yeah. then... Uh, accepted so I think for the young people it's very much accepted but I think it, we also have to explain to the parents that it's actually okay yeah. if your child does a startup it's actually more than okay yeah I, I think that's very important especially with um, the young people's um, parents and also their friends being supportive uh, because it's not easy to be an entrepreneur. Mm. I mean, Peter, you have been an entrepreneur, a serial entrepreneur, and you, you, you understand the difficulties and also the challenges uh, in building up your business, right? Not everyone will be successful. Yep. And, um, uh, and when you fail, then how you, you know, get back yourself together and then try again is something that is very important. Uh -huh. And uh, at Alibaba, we very much stress the entrepreneurship, even though um, I, I have never started a business um, I have to declare. So, um, but in Alibaba, the entrepreneurship that we are trying to promote is uh, be able to step out of your comfort zone and be able to challenge yourself. So, which is important, um, not, no matter you are starting up your own business or not. And this is one of the things mm -hmm. that we hope to, you know, change the um, mind share of the people or the younger generation in Hong Kong or in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that that's actually a very good point. I think that... Uh uh, kind of like the entrepreneurial like attitude and spirit that it's not kind of like some kind of uh, uh, thing that is exclusive to startups. I think that uh, uh, it's actually 
very, very important no matter where you work, you know, big corporation, the government, like anywhere. Uh, I think that you need to have uh, entrepreneurial uh, attitude uh, to be successful, I mean, no matter what you end up doing. And, uh, and this is something that uh, I think the, uh, the guys at uh, Apple, like many years ago, that they, they said that, uh, uh, that they are the biggest startup on the planet. And, uh, you know, no committees and like making lots of uh, uh, decisions, you know, uh, you always meet the right people, the people in charge. And, and I think that it was uh, uh, quite interesting because uh, at the time uh, I was at Rovio and working on Angry Birds and you had a meeting with uh, Apple and they always had the right people show up. And then after the meeting you had very clear action points and then just like, boom, decide, done. And uh, okay, now if you go and meet with Apple, a lot more people will show up for the meeting and uh, uh, maybe it's not as much of a startup as it used to be. But at the same time, uh, then going to many of the uh, corporations, and we had one, uh, or actually still have one very big one in, in, in Finland, and when you went to a meeting there, you had lots of coffee and lots of people, and nobody was really in charge, and they told you that you should go and meet with that guy or that guy, and then like nothing got done. So I think that uh, in any company, no matter big or small, uh, you need to have this kind of uh, uh, entrepreneurial attitude of like getting things done and not like saying that oh that you should go and talk to that person and he or she will help you but really making sure that uh, things happen and not uh, you know kind of like uh, hiding from the responsibility so it's like yeah. for me entrepreneurship is about taking ownership and making sure that things get done yeah 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 I, I agree so Pierre I know you have been you know working in um, like in Europe and recently you are spending mm -hmm. a lot of time in Asia so in terms of this uh, entrepreneurship spirit or the ownership spirit do you find there is a difference um, between different cultures mm -hmm. say for example comparing uh, Finland to you know uh, China or in Hong Kong or in Japan what, what do you feel I, I think that there's a lot of uh, let's say a lot of differences, but also a lot of similarities. Uh, so uh, one, one thing that, uh, I mean, also what then happened after we started Slush in Finland, that five years after we started Slush and then went back to Aalto University and did the same uh, uh, talk about entrepreneurship uh, and asked the same question, then uh, more than half the hands went up. So we actually managed to do this kind of like cultural revolution when it comes to kind of like uh, entrepreneurship and startups in just five years, which again shows that of course, if you're an entrepreneur, you can do anything. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, uh, I think, uh, the good news. Then if I look at, uh, uh, take, you know, Hong Kong and uh, let's say Taiwan and Japan, I think that uh, they have more in common with, uh, you know, among themselves when it comes to the challenges around entrepreneurship than say China. And you'd expect that, oh, but wouldn't like the Chinese culture kind of be the dominant mm -hmm. like thing. But actually, I think that uh, you can see a lot of difference. And I think that it's maybe uh, uh, has to do with uh, uh, like the level of development of the economy. Yeah. So you need to have a certain hunger. And I think that this is what we we're lacking in Finland, what we were lacking in, uh, you know, what we are lacking still, I mean, in Europe, that people are kind of like happy that, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's okay, you don't really like need to do that much more, you're still gonna have like food on the table and you'll survive. And I think that uh, if I look at China, I think it's a very driven uh, environment and uh, people are moving very fast, they're very entrepreneurial. And then, uh, uh, and, and you know that, like in Hong Kong, that probably most parents would say that, why don't you go for a good job in, uh, you know, the banks or real estate or, yeah, yeah. you know, like a real job. And why do you want to, like, take a risk and be an entrepreneur? You might fail. So I think that, and same thing, actually, we've seen with Slush here in Japan, that uh, even though we have many young people here who are really excited about, you know, being an entrepreneur and wanting to change the world, but then we also see then a lot of parents saying that, yeah, but uh, maybe it's safer that you join that consultancy company or Alibaba or I guess Rakuten here in Japan. Uh, so uh, I think that there is uh, a lot of uh, those kind of uh, 
attitudes that we we have to uh, still kind of like fight and also show that it's actually okay to be an entrepreneur. Yeah, I think. Um I mean, entrepreneurs is um, themselves uh, personally they have to have this uh, spirit and also the um, the environment. But also as a startup itself, I guess uh, we were talking about at the back, uh, about this at the backstage is we uh, we, we sometimes feel that um, uh, companies startups like in Asia like in Japan in China because the market is quite big already, so they yeah. will be. Sometimes it's very satisfied of you know being number one in Japan or number one in China. Uh -huh. Of course, number one yeah. in China is already very <laughs> big. But yeah. but why why okay. do we have to go out? So just similar to Alibaba because um, we are actually uh, has a pretty big market share. We are already the largest uh, e-commerce platform in uh, in the world, not only in China. Mm. But we still want to do more than you know just um, staying in China or stay in one country or one market. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think. I would encourage startups to also think it uh, that way because um, just conquering one country or one market may not be enough. With the technology itself, uh, I mean, with the evolution of technology, it's easier to tap into other markets. So it's really a shame if you just give up on that uh, opportunity. And vice versa, people can usually, even you are number one right now, you, you can have uh, newcomers to the market mm. with um, the ease of technology, yeah. with uh, more you know innovation. So, so I I think it's uh, there are two levels, right? Personally, and also for the company itself, we have yeah. to really think out of the box, be um, more you know have a bigger picture, and maybe even bigger picture than yeah. 20, 30 years ago. Yeah. And I think that this is uh, one uh, uh, area where, you know, like being from Finland, obviously we are a very small uh, country, like five million people. So for us, I mean, we always have to go outside because, you know, being number one in Finland is the same as being uh, number one in a uh, small neighborhood in Hangzhou or Shanghai. Or in Hong Kong. <laughs> yeah, or Hong Kong, yeah. And, and of course, uh, uh, everybody understands that that's, uh, I mean, it's okay, but it's not fantastic. And uh, I think that uh, uh, it, it's, it's actually very cool to look at what's uh, going on. And I think now being here at uh, Slush here in Tokyo uh, and having, of course, this event, it's in English. And we have not only local people from uh, Japan, but we have people from Hong Kong, yeah. from China, from the US, from all over Europe. And, uh, and I think that uh, more and more uh, we're living, I mean, of course, it's always been uh, global, but uh, uh, in many many other places, I mean, it's been enough that okay, if you are number one in China, why bother going anywhere else? And uh, same thing actually is true in the U.S. But then, because of the uh, kind of like let's say the benefit of the English language, right, and uh, also uh, that uh, all of us grow up watching, you know, like the American movies and American TV series and things like that, that you can't like. If you are an American startup, you can't like get the uh, global, or at least like the English-speaking global, you can't like get uh, served to you automatically. You don't really need to do much. You just put it on the internet, and it's like okay, it's in English, so then you know people can use it. Uh, and if you are a startup in Japan or in China, uh, it doesn't uh, translate kind of like as easily. So, uh, so I think that. Uh, uh, going forward, it's going to be very, very important. I mean, even more important now that that you have to think global from the get-go. Yeah. Because otherwise, uh, you know, uh, let's say that even if you are uh, the biggest uh, e-commerce player in, say, Germany or France, what happens, you know, next is that then Alibaba comes there or Amazon comes there and then, you know, you're dead. So uh, uh, I think that... Uh, that, that is kind of like one part of it that you really need to uh, think about the global market. And then, then I think also what is great to see players like Alibaba, but also uh, many others, you know, like uh, uh, Tencent. And uh, then you look at uh, now uh, what is happening in India. Uh, there's a lot of startup activity and uh, many, many uh, unicorns being created. Uh, and I think that uh, the new like thing that we will see more and more is that it's not only uh, the company started in Silicon Valley, you know, take the Googles and Facebooks and, and so on, 
that will emerge as the global leaders, but you will see global leaders emerge from uh, China, from India, hopefully from Europe as well. Uh, and uh, I think that that's uh, yeah, super exciting for all of us because uh, typically what I always, you know, my background of being, uh, you know, at Angry Birds, I always ask that, okay, who's going to create the next Angry Birds, the next big thing, the next Alibaba? Yeah. And if three young guys in Helsinki can create Angry Birds, you know, why couldn't you, you know, anybody here in Tokyo or uh, Fukuoka or Sendai or Hangzhou or Hong Kong? I mean, of course you can. And I think that we just need role models and we need to have that kind of entrepreneurial mindset and that kind of uh, a very like positive craziness that, I mean, all entrepreneurs are crazy and we think we can change the world. And guess what? We actually can. So I think that, uh, yeah, having that global uh, mindset from the beginning is super, super important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I totally agree because um, uh, when when our fund selects our startups, of course, we have a social mission to help the Hong Kong startups. But uh, at the same time, when we evaluate the business propositions or the teams, we always ask, uh, what is your bigger plan? What is your vision about your business? If you tell me that it is only about Hong Kong, then I, I don't think any investors will be um, yep. interested. But, so you have to think about your theme of your business, but at the same time, how you are going to bring this theme or your service outside of um, a, to tap into a bigger market where you can serve more cu uh, customers. I think a very important point actually that brought up like the, the social impact. So I think that, uh, uh, so I, I actually think that uh, if you look at uh, startups and you look at all entrepreneurs, so I think that uh, nowadays it's not good enough to just make a great business. I mean, to make a great business, it also has to do uh, good and it has to have positive social impact. Right. So, uh, so I think that, uh, of course, you can separate like, uh, you know, social impact and like in investment and all of that. But I think that uh, kind of like by definition, all of the investments, all of the activities should have positive social impact. Yeah, I, I agree. And then Jack Ma always said, when yep. there's a problem, when there's a problem that you are, and you have a solution to solve it, uh -huh. then there's an opportunity. Exactly. So, when, exactly. so you, we are looking at, uh, you know, to have uh, startups that are able to identify a problem and be able to solve it. And yeah. we believe that, we strongly believe that in this situation, then there will be opportunity. And not only for making money, but yeah. also be able to help uh, yeah. people to live better. And, and I think that this is also important that there is no conflict in that, that you know, doing good and making lots of money. Mm -hmm. I think that it's, uh, of course, if you're making the world a better place, of course, you know, why shouldn't you be rewarded? And I think that the only way to actually change the world is to make sure that whatever you're doing, that it's a sustainable business. I mean, if it's a charity, you know, charities come and go, but uh, businesses are around, hopefully, I mean, for most of us, like forever. So uh, I think that uh, that's another thing that uh, not only a business, but like a sustainable business. And of course, that means that it, it also does good. Like but for the planet. I don't agree with you, Peter. Charity may not be come and go uh, because the fund that I am running is also a charity fund, but we run uh, it in a commercial way. Yeah, yeah, but and that is, that is how we yeah. want to um, be sustainable. So yeah. if there is any yeah. you know, ex uh, profit from the investments, then we'll plow back to the fund so yeah. it continues to but, be but that, sustainable. That's exactly, that's exactly the point I was trying charity. to make was yeah. that uh, uh, and what you're doing is actually... Uh, okay, you might call it a charity, but I mean, you're running it as a business, you're investing, hopefully you get like a few nice e in, uh, exits and then you reinvest, but still you're running it as a business. And I think that the big problem that I see with a lot of like charities and like a lot of that, that they are not run very professionally. Mm -hmm. okay. So, okay, so I think that mean? that's kind of like the whole point that uh, uh, the most sustainable way of doing things is actually through business because then Exactly like in your case, yeah. you will make some money that you can reinvest and you can do even more good. So right. I think that uh, doing this uh, as a business and there's like no conflict between uh, business and doing good and doing the right thing. Yeah, yeah, to to totally agree because I think there's no conflict, right? Yeah, Actually, yeah. Um, uh, there's a lot of research, especially by uh, Michael Porter. Uh, Dr. Michael Porter also uh, mentioned about um, <laughs> 
corporations who has a social impact or social mission uh -huh. in their business actually us usually outperform those who are only very profit driven. Yes. So, yeah, and yeah. I think that we're running out of time here. So uh, I guess that it's a good time to like finish by saying that you know like be good, go do things, and uh, do good things, and uh, make great business happen. So thank you very much, and uh, you. see you around. I guess we're going to be at the Slush Cafe after this. So thank you. Thank you.